This video is sponsored by 3D Materials. More on them at the end of the video. Epax's newest addition to their family of mid-size, upgradable 3D printers. I have been using it for around the past month and I'm ready to share my thoughts. Stick around to find out more. Now before we get started, I just wanted to get this out of the way. Epax sent me this printer at a significant dis discount, which my incredible sponsor is covering for me. However, all my thoughts on this printer are my own and have not been influenced by anyone. Epax does not get to see this review ahead of time. So this printer is the newest variant of their E10 lineup, and unlike most other printers on the market, it can be completely upgraded from their original E10 to this newest 8K variant. This is one of the major things that caught my attention when with this printer. This is a huge plus for people like me who like having the newest tech in 3D printing, but do not want to upgrade every time a newer version is released. For example, my printer came with an upgraded aluminum build plate and build arm. However, if you choose not to include this at first, you can upgrade it any time in the future without having to buy a whole new printer. You just have to buy the part. If a new screen comes out that improves something, you'll be able to upgrade to that without having to buy the entire motion system. This is what happened when they upgraded from their 4K to their 5K screen, 5K to now 8K screen, and I'm sure it'll happen again. So this, but this upgradability comes, of course, at price. This printer retails for 1200 US dollars and will sometimes go on sale for a thousand. So obviously this price is quite high, but throughout my testing, I have grown to think that it's, it's worth the price. So for one, this build quality on this printer is top notch. The printer weighs a solid 20 kilograms, which is significantly heavier than other comparable printers. And there is absolutely zero noticeable play in the frame of the printer, even when I was when peeling full build plates off the FEP. The plate I received is the metal upgraded build plate, but and it's very sturdy, and I've not needed to relevel it once since I received the printer. The only thing that's plastic on this printer, at least the one that I received, is the vat. However, it's extremely durable and seems to be some sort of high strength composite, and there seems to be no downsides. I'm actually quite happy that it's made out of plastic, because it means the vat is much lighter than it would be if it was made out of solid aluminum, and so it's a lot easier to handle when it's filled up with the max capacity of 800 milliliters of resin. The upgraded metal build plate I received is, to put it simply, perfect. With the settings I used, the prints stuck perfectly to the plate, and I had zero prints fall off the plate every print popped off with the ever so lightest tap of my not very sharp metal spatula. The plate does not leave much resin on top of it because of the angled plate, and it doesn't displace much resin when it's going into the mat, so I can fit plenty, which is plenty enough for any prints I've ever done. If you're liking this video so far, please consider subscribing as only 0.7% of you are subscribed. Speaking of the vat, there are a few things I would, I would change with it. First of all, there are no max fill line, so you either have to mark your own, which I did, or just guess, which is not ideal because you don't want 800 milliliters of resin pouring out onto the screen. Second of all, the vat mounts on two metal screws sticking up from either side of the screen with a nut on top. The nuts suck. They are small, slippery, and with resin-covered gloves, they fall into the vat like every time you unscrew them. Also, there are no screws on the edge of the vat to keep the FEP off the table if you put it onto the table. So if you put the vat on the table, the FEP will touch the table. The rest of the printer I have absolutely nothing bad to say about. The touchscreen looks small in, print, in pictures, but is easily usable. Bigger would be nice. and. The LCD screen, like the print screen, is incredible. It has a higher light transmittance than the previous 4K and 5K screens, along with being significantly higher resolution and higher contrast. This new screen means that using the same UV light hardware, you can get significantly lower exposure times. 
According to my testing and EPAX's provided settings of the 4K and 5K variants, I can get about 40% lower exposure times. This means the prints will print faster with higher resolution and crisper edges. The build volume on this printer is 218mm by 123mm by 250mm, which is much larger than any other mid-size printer previously available. It also comes with this, with a 28.5 micron pixel size, so that you can get perfect prints without sacrificing build volume. Speaking of prints, let's take a look at them. Every print that I have done on this machine has come out looking flawless. Crisp details, sharp edges, near invisible voxel lines, this printer has all of it. Using Lychee Slicer, I found there to be absolutely no need for anti-aliasing on this printer because it would make no noticeable difference on the already invisible box lines. The first print I printed was with eSun ePLA resin, and aside from the terrible cleaning job I did, it turned out amazing. Comparing to my Prusa SMS, it looks clearly more detailed, and the difference shocked me. After this, I began printing with Epax Hard Resin with their default settings of 3 seconds. Immediately I was not extremely impressed, so I decided to do an exposure calibration. Settling on 1.7 seconds rather than 3 seconds exposure, the print started coming out flawlessly. I was blown away by the quality and accuracy I was getting. Uh, also, all model links are in the description. So for this review, 3D Materials sent over some of their new super fast 8K and super PCS resin to try out on this 8K printer. So once again, huge thank you for them to them for sponsoring this video. As you can see, these models came out amazingly. This dragon is from Loot Studios. I printed it, came out flawless with every detail showing up perfectly. I printed it at 25 micron layer height and 0.37 second exposure time. I also printed this Lust God I found on My Mini Factory by Dark Gods 3D. Link in the description. I printed this with some super PS PCS resin and it came, to, came out amazingly at 50 micron layer height. You can see all of the details down to the tiny skulls on the pillar, which are, which are about 3 or 4 millimeters tall, and that really impressed me. Now, comparing the prints printed on this 28 micron. 8K printer to the ones printed on my 50 micron 2K Prusa SL1S. The difference is somewhat strange. The SL1S produces prints that have ever so slightly less crisp details and noticeably more voxel lines. And the prints come out weirdly with a matte finish comparing to the shiny 8K prints. I believe this is because the SL1S 50 micron pixel size means that the surface has more micro roughness on the prints, which leads to a more matte surface compared to the 28 micron pixels with the 8K printer. So with this printer I made my absolute favorite model I ever pr printed. This is a model from Blackforge Games, link in the description, and the model printed out perfectly and every part fit together seamlessly and cleanly. There are zero spots in, on the model that didn't print perfectly. To say that I'm happy with this printer and the prints coming off of this would be an understatement. I actually had one failure with this printer, other than failures like printing totally wrong settings like 0.1 second exposure time. Uh, and, in, and this failure was because my basement reached a temperature of 15 degrees Celsius in the middle of the night. And that's, this caused the resin to not properly, properly cure and caused this failure. Before we get to the inclusion, this video is sponsored by the amazing people over at 3D Materials. With us, without them, this video wouldn't have been possible. But wait, before you skip, I think if you're watching this video, you might be interested in what they have to offer. For this review, they sent me over some of their new 8K resins, designed specifically for high detail printing on a high resolution 8K printer. All of these prints that I'm showing here were printed on the Epax E10 8K, 
and as you can see, the quality of this resin speaks for itself. 3D Materials has a wide range of affordably priced resins, ranging from the new, newest resin, Superfast 8K, designed to be printing quickly at 0.6 second exposure time on a high resolution printer, to their engineering resins such as Super PP, designed for parts requiring high mechanical strength, or Superflex, a very flexible resin with 80% elongation before break. If you're interested in trying out these resins, I urge you to go check out the link in the description to try out these incredible resins. You won't regret it. I'm sure, I know I haven't. I use these resins every day. Would I recommend this printer? Well, yes, absolutely. Assuming you have the budget for this printer, you will not be disappointed by the print quality, reliability, and build quality of this machine. And with the very large added bonus of being upgradable. I've had a lot of fun with this machine throughout the time I've been using it, and I'm very happy with it. The only thing that I don't like about this machine is how the VAT connects to the printer with bolts, how there's no max fill line on the, on the VAT, and how there's no feet on the VAT for when you set it down on the table. Other than this, I'm a huge fan of the printer and very happy with it. If you like this video, then like the video. If you loved it, then maybe consider subscribing, as it always helps with the channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time.